Hey, yo, whoa, how's it going? That's great to hear. Today we got another community question from our very own Bo Denarius. He's been on this channel. You know him, you love him. Bo is looking for a script that creates a LUFS based volume automation link. So when I saw this question, my thoughts instantly went to Kenny Joya's video uh, that's called Automatic Gain Writing in Reaper, where he uses the fairly new JS Loudness Analyzer by Kakos to generate a loft based volume automation in real time. So that's what I sent to Bo and he had seen that and he was wondering if a script that just does all of those steps can exist. So yeah, I'll link below to the Kenny Joya tutorial if you haven't checked it out and you can follow his instructions there. But yeah, it is somewhat of a lengthy process to do. You have to add the plugin to your track, play the project through to generate the envelope. Then you got to move it and adjust it from there. And I don't know if I can fully script this to become like a single action, but I definitely know of a slightly faster way. So let's get to that. So if you have SWS installed, you can go to the extensions tab, click on loudness, and you'll see this window right here. We've done a video on this tool, uh, covering it in a lot of detail before. So I'll link to that up there. But long story short, I can select one or a bunch of items, click here to analyze selected items, it takes a little bit of time, and then it gives us this list with all the items and their loudness readings. So far, nothing special, and overall, many features of this window are now obsolete. Since we can get loudness and true peak readings just in the render dialog box, as of Reaper 6, 30 something. But in this case, we can actually use this tool to generate an envelope offline, which is already a huge time saver. So let's just select our main vocal line here and analyze it. And here's all the info we need. Uh, one important thing here is to go to options and make sure this box use high precision mode is unticked. Having this on will give us more accurate readings of our true peak and everything else. But this will disable this next option that we're going to be using. So make sure that's off before you hit analyze. You'll also notice that my track has some plugins on it. But since the loudness tool works at the item level, we don't actually need to bypass any plugin or worry about where the loudness analyzer is in our chain. And we don't need to worry about our compressors and other dynamic control plugins affecting the level readings, which is also great. So now I can go to my Vox track. I'll hit V and that'll open its volume envelope and I'll click on it on the side to select it. And from here, I can come back to the loudness tool, right click. And here we have two options to either create a short term graph in selected envelope or a momentary graph. So for vocal writing, let's just use the momentary graph and we'll see what the difference is once we cover both of them in a second. So hit it and that will generate this envelope instantly. So instead of having to play the track through, at least the loudness tool works offline. Now, if we look at this envelope right now, it's following the contour of the vocal performance. When it's loud, it's going up. And when it's quiet, it's going down. We want to make the opposite of that happen. So this next step is just like the Kenny Joya method. I'm going to move my mouse to the bottom of the envelope, hold option slash alt, and just drag to kind of envelope the whole um, <laughs> envelope in this what we call an automation item. Let's close the loudness tool for now. And to reverse the contour of this envelope is really easy. I can double click the automation item, it'll open this window right here. And I can use this amplitude slider to just reverse it. So as long as you're in a negative value, the contour is reversed. So then you just kind of finesse it based on how much cutting and boosting you want to happen. We can adjust the baseline to bring the whole thing up and down to where we want. I'm also just going to shift the whole automation item a bit to the left. So let's play it and we can make some adjustments by ear after that. It appears that we made a mistake. Wipe the hard drives. So as you can hear, this really helps, especially with the kind of tail end of vocal phrases for them not to get drowned out. So that's awesome. And moving on down here, I have a vocal verb track. This was done in the studio and I just bounced it to a stereo file. So let's hear it. it appears. So we can hear that it's starting to kind of muddy up the vocal track a bit. Now, if we turn it down, it'll just get lost in the whole mix. But another thing I can do is to use this envelope to control any other element in my track. 
Like maybe we can have the reverb turned down when the dry vocals are going. And then as the dry vocals go out, the reverb can kind of come back in to fill in that void that was created. So select the verb track, hit V, and now while holding command or control, I can just click and drag the automation item down to the volume envelope lane on the verb track. Once again, I'll shift it back a little more so that the reverb is turned down right as the vocals come in. And once again, I can use the amplitude slider here to adjust the amount of reduction or boost on this one. So let's exaggerate this a little bit and adjust the baseline. And now we can see that the reverb is turned down like 20-ish dB when the dry vocals are going, but it'll come in between the dry phrases. So let's hear that. It appears that we made a mistake. Wipe the hard drives. So already a lot less kind of like muddy, which is cool but we still have that uh, kind of big reverb for when we need it. Of course, you can do all of this with like sidechain compression, or even you can dock the reverb using the dry signal with Reaper's built-in parameter modulation, which you can link to any audio signal. But generating an envelope obviously gives us a little more fine control. So for example, towards the end of the song, the arrangement gets a little more dense, so there's not as much space for a reverb. So maybe I can just kind of draw over that bit so we have less reverb at that point. Then at the very end, I can just kind of bring the reverb up for a nice little finish. We can do a similar thing to the dry signal. So the contour of the envelope, as you can see, is getting a little more kind of sharp towards the end. But instead of drawing over it, I'll just bring the edit cursor to the beginning of the end. And I can right click the automation item and choose split. So now we have two automation items and for the end bit, we have a second automation item. And again, I can maybe bring the amplitude down a little bit for less sudden movement and bring the baseline up to boost it a little. So it keeps cutting through the dense mix. I can then also right click, choose delete automation, preserve points. I'll do that for both the items. And I can come and zoom in on the intersection here and just delete these points so we don't get like a sudden level jump. So now that first part remains how we had it, but the second part changes. So doing this with plugins would, would require a lot more work. So that's why generating an envelope instead of using a plugin that does all of this in real time is possibly preferable for some of you. I can also just right drag to select all these points that are sticking out a touch too sharp and just hit backspace to delete them. And there we go. Let's do one last example. So let's hear the end of this song where the arrangement gets a little dense. Ooh, and we'll be fresh, and we'll be bad. I one day get tired of coming and So one problem with tracks that have kind of a huge dynamic range is that if we turn the vocals up too much, like we have them now, it'll kind of drown out everything else as we heard. And if we turn the vocals down, we'll just be sacrificing intelligibility. So one cool technique here is Andrew Sheps's parallel compressor bus trick. I'm sure it has a more fancy name, but I don't remember. Uh, but I got a track here and this track is receiving all my buses except the vocal bus. And on this track, we just have a compressor with pretty moderate settings, just ratio of two to one. Threshold is at minus 20. So it's just gonna gently kind of compress all the instruments in parallel. And that way we can keep the vocals up front, but not have everything else kind of drowned out by that. That said, you gotta be careful not to kind of overdo this type of thing, as it'll definitely lead to muddiness and create a lot more problems. And since we already have the main vocal track analyzed, we can just use it to generate an envelope for this track. So once again, hit V and select it. And I'll open the loudness tool once again, and this time I'll right click and choose the short term option. So again, this envelope gets generated, but as you can see with the short term, we get a much more kind of even envelope with fewer points on it. So for something like this, it's more useful as we can keep all the volume movements kind of more subtle and more based on averages rather than, you know, momentary fluctuations.
And I don't actually need this at the beginning here. I want to preserve the dynamic range of the quieter parts. I just want to kind of enforce the louder bit. So I'll just draw over that bit. I'll also go to the end and make it a more gradual come down to minus infinity. And again, double click on the automation item and adjust the baseline. And that's roughly there. So now I'm just going to play the track and adjust these three envelopes until everything sounds good. Um, hopefully that's a, at least a little bit faster than the Kenny Joya method. At least you won't be running anything in real time. So that's already a huge time saver. To make this whole thing a single action, I think maybe won't even be too useful because there's so many adjustments that you have to do kind of in the way. Definitely above my pay grade scripting wise, but maybe somebody will, uh, will jump on this. Possibly the old uh, Leandro Facchinetti over there. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching. If you like the work I do, you can support the channel by becoming a member and watch the video linked above for more information on that. Special welcome to our members, Ivan F., Mikhail P., and Gessler, Gessler, something like that. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Also, a huge thanks to Mextec Music for buying me a coffee. I really loved your new single, listening to it all the time, and I'll put a link to that in the description as well, so I highly recommend everybody else check it out. And finally, a huge thanks to Patrick for buying me six cups of coffee. Patrick runs the Reaper user group, aka Rug, on Facebook. So I really appreciate your support. Thanks for all the hard work you're doing, maintaining what I think is the best Facebook group of all time. Really just awesome stuff. So thank you so much for your support and thanks for letting me spam the group all the time. If you have questions, put them in the comments. Otherwise, take care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.